this is Katie. In today's video, I'm gonna do something a little bit different that I've actually never done before and I've never seen anyone else do before. You guys know that sometimes I do Q and A's where I ask you guys to ask me questions and then I answer them in a video. But today's video, I wanna do a Q and A, but of questions that I would ask myself if I was not me and I watched my YouTube channel. And so I came up with the questions <laughs> and I've never seen anyone else do this before, but if they have, please let me know. But I just thought that it would be kind of fun like to get into my brain maybe a little bit of like, if I was not me, and I watched my own channel, what would I think about it and what questions would I have for me? And so those are the questions that I wrote down. I have, I don't know, five or six or seven of them or so. And honestly, some of them of course are questions that you guys have asked before as well, but these are also just questions that I would ask myself if I didn't know myself. And a lot of them are like pretty personal and I'm not saying that like as clickbait, they are actually pretty personal. But like I told you guys recently, I do want to share a little bit more with you about what I'm doing with my life and stuff with my personal life as well. So I am going to answer some things that are very personal that I haven't in the past, um, but I do want to share more with you guys. Obviously, there's always things that I'm going to keep private, but I want to share a little bit more with you. And so that's going to be this video, like a personal Q and A, but of questions that I would ask myself. So if you are interested in this video, I really hope that you're subscribed and I hope that you keep watching. I have all the questions on my phone. I'm like, not like nervous. Cause obviously I wouldn't share anything. I'm not comfortable sharing, but I'm a little like, okay, Katie, like you're going to get into things that you really haven't before. Okay. So first question is where do you live right now? Honestly, if I watched my own channel, I get it why like some people might be a little like annoyed that I haven't shared that, that I've just said I'm in the Northeast. I get it, okay? Like I really, really get it. And so I decided that I've been here for November, December, January, February, March, April. I've been here for almost six months. I'll tell you where I am. So I'm sure a lot of you guys guessed this already, but I am in New York. I am on Long Island. I'm nowhere near where I grew up or anything because Long Island's actually quite big. It's a long island. It's like 125 miles long. And so I'm not like really close to where I grew up or anything, but I have a friend here who I've known since I was like 19 and I'm 36 now. And he just happened to have an open room in his house for a few months. And so I'm staying with him. I'm very grateful. I really like staying here a lot. I am leaving soon because he's moving, so I'm moving. But yeah, so I'm on Long Island. Been on Long Island this whole time, which again, I'm sure a lot of you guys guessed. But the reason that I wanted to keep it private is it's kind of confusing because a lot of YouTubers or influencers or content creators or whatever tell you what town they're in, you know, and they might even show the outside of their house sometimes. And I just have learned over the years that there are certain things that I feel a lot safer just keeping private, you know? So that's why some of my family is not on here. That's why some of my friends are never on here. And that's why like, if I'm somewhere, I generally would not tell you for a day or two. And that's not like, because I think I'm like so famous, that's not what it is, but just for safety, just for safety and some privacy. And uh, yeah, so I'm on Long Island. But I'm sure a lot of you guys guessed that because when I come back to the Northeast, that's generally where I go. But the friend that I'm staying with now, I've never actually stayed with before. So this is like a different experience and like the town I'm in, I've never lived in before and stuff. So it is a different experience, it's pretty cool. Okay, so the next question that I would ask myself is, are you ever gonna live in your car again? So if you watched me over the years, you would know that I have spent a decent amount of my adult life living in my car, going on really long road trips and traveling the country. And I haven't done that in about a year and a half. I have gone on road trips in the past year and a half, but I have not lived or slept in my car in about a year and a half. I stopped because I got sick, which we've talked about a lot. I got sick and then I just haven't done it again. And now I actually have been having some car trouble. I've been having some health issues. There's a lot of stuff going on in my life. And honestly, living in my car again right now or in the near future does not really interest me. And one of the reasons that I haven't really shared that is because I don't know for sure. Like, I don't know. I literally might change my mind tomorrow because it's not like a definite feeling, you know? It's more like a, I don't think so. I'm not sure, but I don't really think I'm going to. But it's just kind of confusing for me, you know? Like I'm 36 years old, I'm single, but I would like to get married one day. And obviously it is 
harder. It's not impossible by any means, but it is harder to find, you know, a stable relationship being on the road. It's harder to find stable friends and a stable church and stuff like that when you're on the road. Again, not, not impossible, but more difficult. And I started traveling and living in my car over 10 years ago at this point, again, on and off the last 10 years. Sometimes I've lived in apartments or houses, but some of the time I've been on road trips, living in my car, sleeping in my car, really long times of traveling, stuff like that. And so I cannot tell right now if I don't really like the idea of living in my car again because I haven't done it in so long that maybe it just feels a little bit more foreign at this point, which I know is so weird, but I can't tell if it's that. I can't tell if it's partially like certain levels of depression that are like, don't do that because you don't wanna do anything that you used to enjoy or that you might enjoy. You know how sometimes if you have depression, it kind of takes away some of your joy. And so I can't tell if it's that, if it's just that I've been more depressed lately. And so I don't really wanna do the things I used to enjoy. Or if it's just literally that I have done it on and off for 10 years and maybe God wants me to do something different. And maybe it's time for a new chapter of my life, you know, and I'm not sure yet. I really don't know. But I do know that the idea of sleeping in my car does not really appeal to me right now. And so that's just something that I need to like pray about more and really think about like, what are my upcoming goals? But so really, I don't know if I'm ever gonna live in my car again. I'm not sure. I really don't know. Out of like a one to 10, like if one is no and 10 is yes, I'd say maybe like a three. So I'm at like a potentially no, but I still really have no idea. I think that I'm going to have to kind of figure it out over the next couple months, at least if I'm going to do it anytime soon. So I obviously will let you guys know, but at least right now, I don't know, it just does not appeal to me anymore. But again, I can't tell why, because it might still be something that's good for me. It might be good for me to get back on the road or live in my car again or something like that. But it just hasn't been like as exciting. But again, if it's something that's right for me, then I don't care if it's easy or exciting. I'll do it if I know it's right for me because sometimes you have to push yourself, you know what I mean? But at least again, right now, I'm just not sure. I just don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, another question that I would ask myself that I've talked about before, you know, and people have asked me, again, these are not all questions that have never been asked before, but they are just definitely questions that I would ask myself. The next question is, why'd you live in your car in the first place? I know that, especially when I started doing this 10 years ago, living in a car was seen as bad or gross or stupid or only for people who are down on their luck or whatever, you know? But the first time that I ever really slept in my car was just out of convenience, in all honesty. I don't remember the exact first time I ever slept in my car, but I'm pretty sure it was when I was doing road trips back and forth from New York to Nashville because I grew up in New York and then in my 20s, I moved to Nashville. And so sometimes, because I didn't really wanna fly and spend all that money, sometimes I would just drive back and forth. And the drive, you know, is 16, 17 hours. When I was younger, I could do that in one stretch. I could do that now, but it is not as fun now. But there were some times that I would stop and rest for a little while. And so I'm sure that the first time I slept in my car was just during that time. I probably didn't even cover my windows. I probably just stopped at some gas station, didn't care, you know? And I just did that, again, out of convenience. Instead of getting a hotel just to sleep for five hours, I just parked my car and felt asleep for a little while and then I realized how easy it was. I realized how easy it was, how I felt safe. I felt fine doing it. It did not super hurt my back or anything like a lot of people assume it would at least not mine. It didn't do that and so I just kind of kept doing it just again out of ease and convenience and to save some money instead of getting a hotel and then you know a couple of years later I went on a really long road trip and I knew that going on that road trip it was for about a month with one of my friends and I knew during that road trip that I wanted to sleep in my car during it that was just like the goal you know it was like I want to live in my car for a month and sleep in my car we didn't sleep in my car every night but most nights we slept in my car and I was like you know what this is awesome. Like going on the road, sleeping in the car, waking up and going wherever you want that day was incredible. And so that's one of the reasons that I kept doing it was just like that, that sense of freedom. And that's one of the reasons that I even started doing YouTube because I was like, well, this will help me because then I can work on the road and I can show you guys how it's done if you want to or need to live in your car. And so it kind of just kept going from there. And then there were just times or months and months and months on end where I would sleep in my car every night or again, most nights. And then for years, you know, and it was just something that was easy, a lot cheaper than getting hotels. I do love hotels sometimes, but it's a lot cheaper than getting hotels. And it just made traveling make more sense to me instead of, oh, well, I have to save up this money so I can fly and get a hotel and get all these vacation clothes and get souvenirs and stuff. The way that I traveled was if I want to go to St. Louis or if I want to go to San Diego, or if I want to go to the middle of nowhere, Nevada, then I can just drive there. 
and the only money I really need is food and gas and you know, pay my bills and stuff. But then I don't need to travel in the way that I need to get souvenirs from everywhere and get, you know, $45 t-shirts. I don't need to do that. I could if I want to, but I don't need to. I don't need to get fancy hotels. I could, but I don't need to. I don't think I did it for the purpose of teaching me things and showing me how capable I am, but I definitely did learn a lot and definitely did realize how capable I am of doing things like that, you know? So yeah, it's kind of like a, a confusing story, especially nowadays because van life and bus life and all that kind of stuff has grown so much over the last few years, which is awesome. But I didn't start living in my car because van life was popular. I just wanted to live in my car, again, for all the reasons that I already explained, and I just already had a car. And even when van life got popular, I still never thought about getting a van. It just didn't really interest me, you know? Because that's probably another question that if I watched a lot of van life people and then I saw Katie Carney, I'd be like, why doesn't she have a van? But it's really because I started before van life got cool. And so I just wanted to live in a car. I did not want to live in a car because I saw it online or because my friends were doing it or because I saw a YouTube video. Nobody was really doing it back then. Maybe one or two people, but I didn't see them yet. So I didn't get the idea in my head from someone else. I just wanted to do it and God kind of led me to travel that way. And so, yeah, so now it's become like this really huge community and really big lifestyle that a lot of people have been doing the last few years, which is awesome. But I just never had the desire to change that part of my lifestyle to get a van or a bus or anything like that. I've just always been okay with my, my little car, my little Toyota Yaris. All right, so next question. We're gonna get a little bit away from the car life stuff and get a little bit more personal. Next question is, why are you single? <laughs> if I was not me, you know, and I was watching one of my videos, I'd look at myself and be like, oh, she's 36 and, you know, is gorgeous and beautiful and seems so smart and so fun. And why is she single? So this could be a story in and of itself, but I'm gonna give you like the shortest version. Basically, I know why I'm single right now. I guess why did I go through breakups in the past might be a little bit of a different story, but why I'm single right now, there's several reasons. But I think one of the main ones is because I have standards and I know the deal breakers that I have and I know the red flags that I have and I know like the four or five really, really main characteristics that I want in a man. For example, one of them is I want to be with a Christian and then even just finding single Christians in their 30s is, you know, rare in and of itself. And then adding the other things on top of it, it just makes the people who I think would be good for me and the people who I think I would be good for a very small part of the population. And then on top of that, some guys probably just don't wanna date me because I travel so much, because I'm super honest and blunt, maybe because of my lifestyle or my job or something like that, you know? But I just know at least part of it is because I want to be with a Christian, I don't want my own children. I know I might change my mind, I get that, but I'm pretty sure that I don't want my own like biological children. And so even finding a Christian in their 30s-ish or around there who does not want their own biological children, that is a very tiny little percentage of the population. And then again, the other like two things or three things that I really hope for, it just makes it hard to find someone. I'm not saying it's impossible or anything like that. It just makes it a little bit harder. Yeah, so I just have a couple deal breakers, but then anything else, obviously, I would hope to, you know, have compromises and stuff on with the person that I'm with. And um, yeah, I just, at least right now, have not really found anyone recently who, you know, match up with what I really believe that I need and want. And then obviously who maybe I have not matched up with what they need or want as well. Cause it obviously also depends on what the guy wants as well. So yeah, I'm single for, for several reasons, but I do think that one of them is because the standards that I have really, really, really lessen the type of person who I would be with and who I believe would also be with me. But I also just think that sometimes I might be hard to date for some people maybe. And so does that mean that there might be some things for me to work on? Absolutely. But then are there also just some things that I like about myself, but that other people might not like, and that I'm still going to keep. But again, only a really specific person would like that. Yeah, of course. So there's a couple things. But the next question on my list, and this one is really one that I never thought that I was ever going to share, but I think it's time. Okay. Um, the next question on my list is, have I ever been close to getting married? And the answer is yes about a year ago and I never told you guys. And again, because there are some things that I wanna keep private and one of them is my dating life. So I have talked about a couple boyfriends on here, but I think there's only been one boyfriend in the past eight years of me doing YouTube. There's only one boyfriend who I ever said his name and that was seven and a half years ago. And he was only in one video for a half a second walking by. He did not really wanna be in my videos. But any other boyfriend I've had since then, I either maybe mentioned 
that I had a boyfriend or just went through a breakup. Or there have been quite a few times where I might show that boyfriend on like my Instagram stories. But even that I have not done in years. And don't get me wrong. This is something that I also never really have told you. I have dated some of the people that you've seen in my videos. I just was not comfortable sharing that we were dating yet, you know, but there have been a couple of people in my videos who I was kind of dating at the time that you saw them. But also on my Instagram stories, I have shown some boyfriends on there, but I have not done that in years. Um, like I have literally not said this person is my boyfriend on any social media. I think the last time I did it was about four years ago. I think. And part of that is just because again, like my dating life, especially because some of them I'll date for a month and then I'll break up with them or they'll break up with me or whatever. And so saying, oh, I'm dating someone. And then a month later being like, oh, you broke up. And then a week later, oh, I'm, I've gone on three dates with this guy. Oh no, now we're not seeing each other anymore. That type of talking about that kind of stuff to me just sounds like drama. And I don't really like that. I don't really wanna talk about that kind of stuff. And so basically I was kind of thinking the next time I had a really, 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 really serious boyfriend, I would share it with you guys. So maybe either after you were dating for a long time or maybe after I was engaged or something, maybe I would share it because it is just something that's personal to me and not something that I really want to be super public about. But again, sometimes I'll date someone for a couple weeks and then it'll fizzle out or we'll break up or whatever, or we'll get into a fight or something. And I just don't really want to share all of that kind of personal stuff on here. But I did have a boyfriend and we broke up about a year ago. This is the part that I really thought that I was never gonna tell you guys. Um, not to like, I don't know, like not to like be a jerk or anything, but just because I do want to keep certain things private, but I do feel comfortable now sharing this with you guys. So about a year ago, I did mention that I went through a really bad breakup. I did mention that on here once or twice in some videos, but what I did not mention is that, oh, this is so weird to share. Okay, no, but I want to, I want to, I want to. If I didn't want to, I would not do it, okay? So I do want to. What I did not mention is that we already had our wedding planned. It's a long story, but long story short, we were not technically engaged. He was about to move, very long story short, he was about to move and after his move, he was gonna buy the ring. So basically we were just going to get the ring afterwards. We already had it picked out and we already had our wedding date scheduled and we already had my wedding dress and we were gonna elope. We already had all the plans. We already knew where we were gonna do it, what we were gonna do. We had the day, we had my dress. And then two months before our wedding, he ended up telling me that he didn't want to be with me anymore. And that was a very difficult time for me because that relationship was hands down by far the best relationship I've ever been in. It felt healthy. We communicated so well. So I thought all of our goals lined up. We got along so well. Like I firmly believed that that relationship was God telling me, here's your husband. I firmly believed that. And I guess there were certain things about me that he didn't like, but instead of him telling me that so I could potentially work on them or we could compromise or communicate or anything like that, he instead just broke up with me and left. I don't really know why he didn't communicate those things. Maybe he didn't feel comfortable to, maybe he was just dealing with other things himself. I don't know, but he just broke up with me and left. And yeah, so, I did almost get married once, had the ring picked out, had his outfit picked out too, we didn't buy it yet, had my dress. But yeah, so I did almost get married once and it was last year and that was hard. That was hard, but I hope he's doing okay. And uh, yeah, that's very hard for me to share with you guys. And I know like a lot of YouTubers and content creators and, and influencers on Instagram and stuff, they share everything like this. Like they would share that kind of stuff. But again, just for me, there's certain things that I feel more comfortable keeping private. But so yeah, so if you remember that video from a year ago of me saying that I have to deal with this breakup, that's why that breakup was so hard is because we were about to get married. But it's one of those things, you know, now looking back, I'm glad that he left before we got married. You know, I am someone who like, I want to admit if something's my fault. I really do because that's the way that I know that I can learn and grow and work on myself if necessary. But the thing was, was like when he left, he didn't really tell me why. So I didn't really know what I could have done differently. And so again, it could have been that I did something wrong and he just never told me. It also could have been that maybe he was dealing with something and he didn't want to tell me. I thought our communication was really great, but apparently there were just some things that he kept from me. But I do wish that he told me so that I could have seen if it was something I could have worked on or if it was just obvious that maybe we weren't a good match. But 
I thought we were from what I knew. He was great, but I, I hope he's doing okay. I really do. I really, really hope that he's doing okay. This video is already getting long. So I'm just gonna do one more question. Oh, this is very personal. Another question is why haven't I shared my mental health diagnoses? You know that I've shared that I do have PTSD and that I do have OCD, but I haven't shared my other mental health diagnoses. And I have a couple of them. And basically, this is a quick answer. The reason that I haven't shared them is because I'm just not comfortable sharing them. Again, like I said before, like there are just some things that I just wanna keep private for my safety, just for my privacy, for my, you know, mild level of sanity and just certain things about myself that I don't necessarily want going public, you know? And I think we're all like that. And I know that my job is different than most and my job is to share, but there are just gonna be some things that I keep private. And so I am comfortable talking about PTSD and I am comfortable talking about OCD, but the other ones I, don't think I'll ever share. I might change my mind, of course I might, but I at least right now just have never felt comfortable to. You know, the internet is, uh, can be a very mean place and those diagnoses are, are very personal and they're very hard and they're things that I struggle with and deal with every single day. I know most people would be nice. I know that they would. I know that most of you would be so nice, but still just something that I just don't feel comfortable doing because of how the internet acts, because there are just certain things that I want to keep to myself. And I do know that there's kind of an idea, not for everyone for sure, but for some people who think that if they watch a YouTuber, that that means that they're entitled to know everything that they want to know about them. And I'm not saying that's everyone. I'm not even saying it's most people, but there are some people who are like, well, if you're gonna share online, then you need to share everything that I wanna know. And it's like, well, that's not true. I'm still a person. I'm still a person on this side, you know? And so there are just always gonna be some things that I don't feel comfortable sharing. And I think my mental health diagnoses and certain characteristics I have and certain parts of my past that have to do with my mental health diagnoses and all that kind of stuff, I just don't think I'll ever be comfortable sharing publicly. Not only because I just do wanna keep certain things private, but also just because of how nasty the internet can be. I've shared a lot about my PTSD and there are literally forums online of people making fun of me for my PTSD and trying to prove me wrong and all this stuff. And it's like, this is my personal life. Something devastating happened to me when I was young and that's why I have PTSD. And there are people online trying to say that I'm lying. I'm not saying that they hurt my feelings. That's not what I mean. I'm not saying that these people are hurting my feelings. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is that that's disgusting that they're doing that. And I don't wanna be a part of it. I don't wanna act like it's okay that other people are mean to other people, cause it's not. And that has nothing to do with my feelings gonna hurt. This just has to do with logic. This just has to do with like, let's be nicer to people. Yeah, it's just something that I don't feel comfortable doing. And so I just probably won't end up doing it. But I do think I'm gonna end this video here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this little like, different version of a Q&A. Please let me know if you did. I really hope that you're subscribed. Let me know in the comments any questions that you might have for a future Q&A where I take the questions from you guys. And yeah, I hope that we can be nice in the comments because I did just share a lot of like really personal things and I'm nervous to post this video. But again, if I was too nervous and uncomfortable, then I wouldn't post it. So if I'm posting this, it means that I'm at least comfortable sharing, but it is still just something that's a little nerve wracking. You know what I mean? And so I hope that we can be kind. But anyway, yeah, I guess it's gonna be it. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that you have a wonderful day. I love you. Jesus loves you and I'll talk to you later. Bye.